So I'm gonna pause the presentation real quick and answer a question. How would you describe peaks in you in cuss? So how would we describe peaks in the you for cuss? So you're going to want to, let me go back to the you. The peaks is anything if it's unusual. So when we had our data, we have one peak, which isn't really unusual. Most data sets have one peak. So if there are two peaks, like let's say we had a lot of data points here in 60 to 65 feet and a lot of data points over here in 85 to 90. And they had two peaks like this. That's something we want to talk about because that means we have really small trees and really tall trees and nothing in the middle. So that as statistician is interesting to us. Maybe one group of farmers is using a certain fertilizer that isn't helping the trees while the other one is using really good fertilizer. And if you're a farmer, you're going to want to know that because you're probably going to want bigger trees to harvest more cherries. So the peaks are only really talked about if there's more than one. Or if there's just like a flat, if there's no peaks. It's completely flat. I see a question here. Let's see if I can answer that for you. Uh, Tony says, is Barron's the best AP stat book? I have Barron's and Princeton Review. They're both really, really similar. Um, oh, there we go. Cool. So now I'm starting to answer Tony's question. Thank you, Amanda, um, about the Barron's textbook. I have the Barron's textbook as well as the multiple choice practice free response or multiple choice. That's a good thing to, to have as well. I, I like Barron's, but Princeton Review is just as good. Thank you for the question. Keep popping in questions. Those are going to help me. So, of course, anytime. And I'll bring that in um, and start talking about how you use it. All right, Brandon. So you asked for box plots. We don't describe spread. We do. We definitely do. So I'm going to go back a couple slides. Show you this one. So in this AP problem, and again, I think it was from 2015. I'll double check it. Um, but we do talk about spread. So there are a couple ways we can do it. We can just talk about the IQR which is that inner quartile range right there or right here. So when we compare the spread of these two, you're going to see Corporation B has a smaller spread. And essentially that means the data is more concentrated. So we have a lot of data points that are in between here and here. And when I say a lot of data points, I mean 50% of the data, right? Because each box represents 25%. And if we look at the scoring guide right there, the range and the IQR of salaries are greater than Corporation A than for Corporation B. So right there is where you see the point that they give you for comparing spread. Box plots actually is a very good way to measure spread because it tells you 25% of the data and where it is. So definitely talk about spread when you're describing distributions, especially box plots. Thank you for the question. We do want to talk about shape. We can't get the exact shape, but we can get something very similar. And actually, let me bring up, hold on one second. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you look over here, let's see if I can zoom this in. Wait. So we have this distribution, and we can kind of see, good, okay, you guys can see it. A normal distribution or a, a symmetrical distribution will look like this when it comes to box plots. So it'll be kind of equally represented. The length of each box plot will be kind of equally represented. If it's positively skewed, which just means it's right skewed, you're going to see these two on the left-hand side, so from the minimum to the median, be closer together. And then the right side is going to be a little bit more spread out. And again, if we think about the shape of a distribution, it means a lot of data is going to be here, and then it's going to kind of fizzle out to the right. And then negatively skewed, we also call that skewed to the left, is going to look like this, kind of the opposite of positive. Positive, again, just means skewed to the right. Negative means skewed to the left. So we actually can describe distributions using um, 
or we can describe the shape of a distribution of a box plot. Uh, not sure why they ignored it that year, but don't count on it moving forward. Because I've definitely seen rubrics where they want you to count all four, or they want you to describe all four parts. Did this help, Brandon? Brandon, sorry. Cool. Very, appreciate the question. Really digging the question part of this. All right, I got another question. Can all graphs have unusual from cuss? Great question, Kevin. No, you don't always have to mention unusual points in the distribution if there are none. So I'm gonna go back to the unusual. If none of these exist, you don't have to talk about it when describing the distribution. You can say there is nothing unusual about the distribution and that'll be fine, but you don't have to. And so I'll go back to this one right here. So corporation B, there's nothing really unusual about it. And we'll see in our, solution that it says the two highest salaries of A are outliers, but B doesn't have any outliers. So it's just saying there's nothing unusual about B, but there is something unusual about A. So we don't always have to talk about it if it doesn't exist, but that only is for unusual. You do have to talk about center, spread, and shape every time. But unusual, if there's nothing unusual, you can say there's nothing unusual, or you just can leave it out. And hit done. Cool. Keep the questions coming. I'll leave this up so you can kind of take a look at it. I can give you a quick response to B. So after you usually describe a distribution, they're probably asking you to then make an inference about it. All right. So now that you have all these distributions and it's being described, take a look. And in this case, they want you to say, give one reason why you might choose job A. So you can see job A, you might, there's a chance that if you took job A, right, because they're starting out at 36,000, and then this is their salary a year later. So it looks like a job A, there are some people who didn't really make that much more five years later. But on the other end, you have people that really made a lot and you have an opportunity to make a lot of money. So one reason my white, why you might choose corporation a is because you have an opportunity to make close to $80,000, right? So the maximum of corporation a is a lot higher than the maximum of corporation B. That's one reason grounded in statistics, why corporation a would be better than corporation B. Now you also might, or part, B of question B asks, give one reason why you would accept corporation B. So corporation B, although it doesn't have as high of max, the data is not as spread out. So you have more confidence because the spread is smaller that you'll make somewhere between this, this amount of money, right? 42,000 and 60,000. So you're, the probability of making something between there is higher in corporation B then in Corporation A. So if you want stability, you might want to go with Corporation B because the spread is smaller. And notice both of my answers to those questions had some sort of statistical reasoning behind it. I didn't say Corporation A looks more fun or Corporation B has more comfortable chairs. That's not what the AP readers are looking for. They're looking for something grounded in statistics. So again, we're always going to see, and it's usually question one or two, about describing a distribution. You're not always gonna to have to create it as often as you are going to describe it. 